Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're drawing and painting an adorable little tufted titmouse bird. If you want to follow along and create all nine of the birds for this series, you can, or you can design this as a standalone painting. It's completely up to you. If you want to see how I lay out the design for all nine of these birds as one complete painting, check out this video. All right, let's talk about supplies for this project. I'm trying out a brand new paper. This is a Sennelier block of 100% cotton, 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. Watercolor blocks are really nice because the sides are glued down so that prevents warping and buckling. The paper is pre-stretched and there's just one little sliver here where you can insert something like a credit card or a palette knife to gently remove each sheet of paper after you've finished your painting. The size of this block is about 12 by 12 inches all the way around and I'll be using my standard palette of 18 colors here. I've already designed the layout for all nine of my birds. We're going to be doing the tufted titmouse here and he's going to be in the upper left corner of my paper. I do want to show you guys how I sketch it ahead of time but if you want you can always draw your bird on a scrap piece of paper this is just printer paper and then use something like transfer paper to trace your drawing directly onto your watercolor paper that will help prevent any excess erase marks or mistakes make sure you have paper towel for blottings a water jar a spray bottle for reactivating your paints if they're on a palette like this and a couple of watercolor brushes I'm going to be using my silver black velvet size 8 and size 4 round brushes now when you pre-design your drawing it's a good idea to decide ahead of time if you want to have lost and found edges. So for example, on the top of the bird's head, there's an area where the light is shining and the feathers are a little bit lighter. So I want this to be a lost edge. What that means is that I'll be using wet and wet so that the paint will just sort of disappear into the background white of the paper right there. I'm going to do the same thing here on the back of the leg and potentially on the top of the tail. So you can go ahead and decide where you want to have hard edges such as here in the front of the face where you've got this little black marking which is really distinctive maybe along the top of each leg and those are going to really help give this bird some beauty some shape so let's now take our drawing and do a, an actual high quality drawing on our watercolor paper now i'm going to look more carefully at my reference photo for guidance so that i can get a more accurate sketch and to prevent myself from dragging my hand through it, it's probably a good idea to start on the left side of the drawing, making little markings for the tail. Now you might feel a little lost when you're looking at all of these long linear feather shapes. Just create the envelope shape of the tail itself first, and then you have the top wing coming over the top of the tail. All right, so that's what that mark is right there. And then we can draw the back of the wing coming upward. It curves up slightly. And as I mentioned, I want the back of the head of the bird to be a lost edge. You can always erase that. You can draw it ahead of time lightly and then erase it so that you can remind yourself when you go back in with the paint that it's going to be a disappearing edge there. But here at the front of the face, I'll go ahead and draw a stronger line. All right, so we've got the back wing feather here and the front of the face. Let's be brave and do a curving motion for the wing coming down like this. And then the little body comes up and connects to the beak. Try to judge the distance between the curved shoulder of the wing and the beak itself. They're pretty close together, you might be surprised. And then you have a shiny space on the top of the beak that's catching the light, so we can outline that and indicate it. Plan ahead for that for our paint. And the little black shape, the marking on the front of the face, that's important as well. Try to take a look at the negative space where you have these white feathers between the eye and the beak, and that's how you can decide where the eye goes. Also, look at the angle from the eye to the shoulder. And then again, the back of the head is going to be a lost edge. And then from there, you can just complete any shapes that are missing. Here we have another lost edge where we've got the feathers coming out away from the leg. And then you can go ahead and draw the little leg coming forward. Try to judge the correct angle that the leg is coming down where the foot, this one little claw, comes backwards across its stem or branch or whatever it's sitting on. And then check the distance between the tail feather and the other back leg from here to about here. And draw the claw. Sketch lightly. Don't fully commit until you're Convince that you've got the placement exactly where you want it. All right, so I'm going to fatten out the belly just a little bit. You can exaggerate some of the features if you want it to look a certain way, a little fluffier, a little cuter, whatever you want. This is your painting, so feel free to deviate from the reference photo as much as you wish. If you want it to look like an Audubon scientific study, you might take more time on the sketch than even on the painting. 
But if you just want to get a fun gesture or pose and get across the idea that this is the type of bird that you're looking at here, you can be looser and freer with your sketch. Now I'm realizing I made the wing not quite wide enough, so I'm going to bring it down just a little bit lower. And already I can tell that helps. So I couldn't avoid erasing altogether, but that's okay. And then if you wish to indicate a couple of the straight lines of the wing feathers overlapping each other, try to keep your hands steady. You don't have to draw them all, maybe just a few to suggest that mark there. And then once again, I'm going to erase the back of the head and leave a couple of spots here where we'll have lost edges. And that's pretty much it for the sketch. All right, so let's set this aside and get our paints ready to go and we will start painting. I'm going to protect my paper with some paper towel right here and then bring my palette right over the top so I can have it nice and close to my drawing. Set my water jar here. This way I'm not potentially ruining my paper by dragging my brush across it and dripping on it. I want to make sure that I'm protecting the rest of the paper so that it's ready to paint the other birds on it. Colors for today. In the reference photo you can see there's a little hint of orange right underneath the wing. So I'm going to be using my Winsor Newton Transparent Orange. It's a good idea to spray your paints to activate them so they're ready to go. And for the gray and the bird's feathers, I'll be using my Daniel Smith Indigo or you can use a good substitute is Payne's Gray. And then to help neutralize it so it's not so blue, I'll probably be mixing it with my Daniel Smith Transparent Brown Oxide. And that's one of my favorite grays, is to mix brown and dark blue and water it down and you get a nice gray. So I think those will be the three main colors I use for this painting. Let's start with our size four round brush, something small. Make sure that it's completely clean by rinsing it in the water first. And let's paint all of the gray feathers on the bird. And I'm going to start with wet and wet. I'm just taking clean water, painting it over the top of the bird. Where I want to have this lost edge, I'm going to let the water extend beyond. So I'm taking clean water and painting the inside of the entire bird. Anywhere where I want to have a lost edge, I'll let the water extend a little bit beyond that. Beyond where I imagine the pencil line would go. You can avoid the legs for now. We'll be painting those with dark colors wet and dry with more detail at the end. Save your details for the end. And you can paint around the eye and the beak for now too if you wish. We just want to get down some light colors, some light washes within the lightest values of the bird's feathers. Now let's mix up some of our gray. I'm going to use my transparent brown oxide and indigo. You could also use ultramarine and burnt sienna. That's another option I can show you guys. So here is burnt sienna and ultramarine. Really nice gray. And then I added a little too much indigo here, so I'm going to need to add quite a bit of water to make sure that it's nice and watered down. But you can see the similarity in these two grays. So we have plenty of paint. I'm removing all the extra water from my brush because I don't want to introduce too much excess water. And then I'm going to drop that in, this gray that we mixed up, right into the head. I think I want it to be a little more brown. So you can always adjust whether it's more brown or more blue depending on the mixture. And we're just dropping that into the front of the little bird's head. So I want to encourage the paint to flow right up next to where this edge is going to disappear. The front of the head, of course, can be a hard edge. But right here, I want it to be really soft. I'm going to remove most of the paint from my brush and then just swipe along that area that we pre-wet. Areas you don't need to be quite as careful, you can work quicker and just use more of a quick sweeping motion of your brush. Notice the little value changes that happen. For example, you've got really white, bright feathers right here where the head meets the shoulder wing. So keep that nice and light. And then I'm seeing some reflected, almost yellow tones in the bird's belly. So for that, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre and drop that into the belly in the shadow area. 
we're just getting some rough colors down. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. Take as much gray as you want for the darker areas. And you can even paint a first layer in the legs. I'm going to rinse some of that so I have a really light gray for the little area here underneath the wing. And I'm going to rinse that out. And now is my chance to grab some orange. Remember that transparent orange. Whatever orange you have, you could mix it using a warm red and a yellow. And I'm just going to paint that right under the wing. If it's too bright, remove a little bit and soften. While your paper's still wet, you can push and pull the paint and spread it out quite a bit. And we're going to leave this little area completely untouched by paint. Now I'm really liking this gray with the ultramarine and burnt sienna. I'm thinking that's kind of what I'm going to use more of here. So I'm mixing up some more of that. And I'm going to apply it a little bit darker on the tip of the wings here. And just a flat layer all across the back wing. You might be wondering, what about the highlights? Well, this will serve as your lightest value, and we'll be painting details over the top of it. So just go ahead and paint the whole back of the bird a solid light gray color. And you can do the same for the tail feathers. As long as it's a little darker than the white of the paper, it will stand out. A little more color on the belly if you wish. And around the eye. I definitely see some yellow tones here in the reference photo, so I'm trying to mimic that a little bit. And then in the front of the face, it gets darker. You can see the feathers really do darken up towards that black marking. So I'm taking a little bit more of my darker gray and gently swiping my brush across the front of the face. At this point, the paper has dried somewhat. So it's taking the paint without it dispersing too much, which is nice. I can do a little more feather texture in the front of the face, get away with a little more detail. And you can extend the little crest of the head with some small, gentle brush strokes. So very light feathering motion with my brush here. It's barely got paint on it. It's kind of almost beginning to dry, but it's scraping off the surface of the paper, producing this fuzzy feather texture. I'll paint around the eye. And then let's go ahead and let that dry for now. We can come back to it when it's completely dry and start painting some darker details over the top. All right, I'm gently moving my palette aside so that I have space to rest my hand for the small details and the dark values within the face. I'm going to take pretty much pure indigo. If you have a version of indigo that's really blue, you might want to neutralize it by mixing in some brown. A reddish brown will do the job, and that'll turn it pretty much black. So with your black or dark blue or Payne's gray, whatever dark you have on your brush, go ahead and paint the dark details inside of the little bird's face. Carefully avoid that highlight on the top of the beak. And we're just painting this space. Now I'm going to spread out the bristles of my brush by kind of smashing it down. There's still paint in my bristles. And I'm going to use this upward pulling motion of the brush to help connect that dark marking to the rest of the facial feathers, creating texture and connection. Then once again, I'll bring my brush to a point and paint the eye. In the reference photo, there really isn't much of a highlight in the eye. You can add one if you wish, or add a little rim around the eye just to give it a more shiny, lifelike look. That's up to you. I am going to leave a teeny little highlight in mine. I think it looks super cute. And if you accidentally cover that up, you can always use white opaque paint to restore the white of the eye. Now I'm going to mix up some more dark gray. and begin to redefine the separation of the head from the shoulder or wing feather. Once again, spreading out the bristles of my brush for a little bit of texture while creating that linear shape along the shoulder wing. 
Then I'm going to dip gently in the water and do a broad sweeping motion with the belly of the brush to darken the whole underside of this top wing. I'm going to mix in a little bit more brown and remove some of the paint and remove some of the water on my paper towel so I have a light wash in my brush of this brownish gray. And now I'm going to begin to paint some suggestions of separated feathers right here. If it's too dark, rinse some of it out and swipe over the top to help bump it down a little bit. And as you move towards the top of the body, you want to reduce the dark value on your brush. So dip in the water, remove the excess on your paper towel so you have a nice light value on your brush, and you're gradually working your way lighter towards the top of the bird. Now with this light gray that's in my brush, I'm beginning to define some of the shapes inside of the face. Just light grays that change value. Check your reference photo and try to make adjustments with your paint color depending on what you see in your photo. There's this little shape surrounding the eye here of feathers that come out and around almost like the sunbeams surrounding the sun. I'm going to take a little bit of brown darkening what appears to be white feathers but because they're in the shadow they look darker. And I'm really going to darken the underside of the belly since this is all in shadow. So I'm taking my light, taking my grayish brown mixture and darkening up the shadow. I need to dip in the water. It's not working smoothly across the paper for me. So a little more water will help your brush glide more effortlessly across the paper. Now where we have this lost edge, I'm taking some very light tinted wash in my brush with a little bit of extra water and I'm going to paint some feather details right along the leg without defining that edge. We want to still leave it up to the imagination to complete that shape. As the artist, you do not need to define every edge for your viewer. You can let their brain do that and it works wonderfully. Here I'm darkening up underneath the back wing. And I'm going to darken even more. There's a really strong shadow underneath this wing, so let's really boost that. When you start to add your darkest values, you'll be amazed at how it starts to really come to life and look three-dimensional on your paper. Try not to have too much water in your brush, especially when you're going in with these darks, because they'll explode on the paper if it's a little bit wet. So always be controlling how much water is in your brush, and that will help you have that much more control in your painting. All right, so for these tail feathers, make sure you have a nice tiny brush that's coming to a small point, and just paint a couple of lines. We have to adjust your grip on your brush. I'm just going to do two dark lines that are slightly separated, suggesting those tail feathers. That's pretty much all it needs. I'm going to remove some of that paint almost all the way so I have a tinted wash of my indigo in my brush and add that as a mid-tone to the tail. Too much water in your brush is going to cause extra pushing and pulling of the paint on the surface of your paper which is sometimes called the cauliflower effect and that might not be what you want in your painting. Okay grab some more of your dark gray and then finish painting some of these feathers in the wings. We want to create separated dark lines, leaving gaps between your brush strokes so it looks like dark to light to dark to light. Have to have a steady hand for this, just do your best. And if you only manage to paint a couple, that's okay. It's still suggesting those beautiful wing feathers. That's what we're going for here. My hand's shaking a little bit too. It's hard to keep it steady when you're working that small. I've rinsed out the paint on my brush and just dry brush swiping across the surface of the paper here. Taking a tiny bit more brown and I'm going to darken along the wing feather. Keep looking at your reference photo and if your values appear off, it's probably because they're not dark enough. We're just creeping our way up to it, working our way up to the darkest values that we see. It's better to be cautious and conservative 
and work your way up gradually than to just go in guns a-blazing as dark as possible. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and complete the claws. I'm just gonna do a couple little brush strokes suggesting the claws. I'm not gonna completely render them out. So I'm using indigo. I really didn't need my larger brush. We may just stick with this brush for all of these paintings. And I'm darkening the shadow side of this leg. Taking the little claw across the top of whatever it is he's gripping. In the reference photo, it's this kind of iron piece that he's sitting on, but I think I'm just gonna make it a branch. So to do that, I'll just take a little of my transparent brown oxide and a couple of rough brush strokes on the dry paper to suggest a shadow on whatever it is he's sitting on. Like that. And then maybe another little branch coming out and away. And that's all it needs. Okay, as promised, you can do a little bit of spatter effect. I think it looks really cool. And I'm gonna use that transparent orange color. I'm gonna protect my paper all around it with some paper towel like this. And then wet my brush grab some transparent orange, swirl it on the palette with some more water. I don't want it to be too vibrant. And then take my very wet brush and gently tap. I just want a couple little spatters, nothing overkill here. Then if you wish, you can do some manual circles just for a little bit larger shapes. Don't make them too dark. I like the look of the lighter spatters, I think but it's not cheating to just make them the shapes you want them. There we go. So there is our tufted titmouse bird, the first in our series on this large sheet of paper. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for the Cardinal coming next week. And if you like my style of teaching and want to learn more, check out my watercolor mastery membership. I'll leave a link in the description to that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.